Hey, good morning, Jerry. Obviously, I know you, this, you've been in this spot before, but just what, what has this week been like, and, and how are things different for you in terms of you know preparing not only on a short week, but also you know being the best play caller on Thursday night? Well, uh, as far as you know, just you know, once we figured out that we you know we had some uh, a situation as far as Joe and couldn't come back in and stuff like that, that was on Monday. But the good thing is we had already prepared on Sunday night after the game. We all came back in, watched the film from Washington, and then we start preparing for Arizona. So we kind of understood what we need to do. The big thing is that it's now you know Joe's been zooming in, so we still in our meeting settings. Joe's been still doing the same thing he's been doing, and I did mine. The biggest thing is we just got to do a little bit more in the meetings. So that's kind of what I've been taking my role on. Jim Bolzing. Jerry, you faced some running quarterbacks lately. Uh, is it safe to say that Kyler Murray kind of a different dimension? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you look and it started. we started with New Orleans, and, you know, everybody's running. The biggest thing we got to do is, again, uh, Murray's been doing a great job and scrambling. You know, we, we got to make sure we try to keep him in the pocket. And, you know, he, he's going to make some plays. The biggest thing we can't do is get discouraged because he makes a run or two. We can't give up big plays over our head. The biggest thing we got to do is make sure we contain him in the rush. And we can't be afraid to go get him. And, you know, the situation we got to do is make sure we, we keep worrying, not so much worry about him because they got a great receiving core also. So the biggest thing is we got to make sure we keep everything intact. Bill Hewitt. Hey, Jerry, um, obviously you're calling the plays on Thursday, but otherwise, how, how does Thursday change for you? Is like, does Ryan like take over some of your normal duties, or how's that all going to work? Yeah, you know, one of, the, one of the things Ryan has been doing is, uh, you know, we've been working together for the last two years, which is great. He kind of understands what I like. I know what he likes, and so he's been kind of doing some of the things that, that I've been doing, and I've been kind of taking on the other road. So really, we've been kind of tied to the hip this week a little bit more, but it's not like it's, it's new to us. We've been working together. It's not like um, all of a sudden we got a, I got a new assistant. Ryan understands what, what I like. And now, hey, Ryan, you do this more, you do this. Hey, well, what do you like in those situations? That's the conversation we've kind of had, which is a little different. But I think it's good that now he understands, oh, well, I, I can speak up. You know, you don't have to be a silent partner. And I think that that's good for him to understand those roles. Rob Rachel. Hey, Jerry, you know, you've, you've been around a long time. And I know you've played and you've coached against a lot of really good dual threat quarterbacks. But you know, does does Murray's accuracy maybe put him at at, at another level? I mean, I think he's at like seventy four percent completing passes right now. I mean, is that part of that? Is some of the guys out there like Vic or people you might have played in the past? Well, you know, like when you look at guys, I, I he's a to me like if you look at Randall Cunningham when he first came onto the league. He was doing some stuff that a lot of guys couldn't do. And I think uh, Murray is doing the same thing. He, he's fast enough to get around the corner. And then his receivers are good enough to stay open. And now he finds those guys. So when you watch the film, you know, he can, he can throw the ball on time when he drops back. But he also scrambles and the receivers stay alive. And he makes, a, makes all those throws. So, you know, one of the things we just got to do is we got to make sure we're plastering and we're, we're, we keep playing with effort. Because the play is not going to stop if you think you got him down. We got to continue to play. West Hotwoods. Jerry, yesterday Matt mentioned that I think Kirk is actually the one that will relay the calls to Devondre. Just how do you sort of see that working out? And, and are, do you, will you be on the sideline, or do you think you'll, you'll be up in the coaching box for that? Well, I think one of the things we're still kind of working out, and I've done it both ways. You know, I've been on the sideline in Buffalo for five years, and then I was actually in the box when I was in Tennessee. So it really doesn't matter to me. I want it to be a smooth transition situation. You know, and the good thing is Kirk and I, we work together in Washington, so we understand each other. We pretty much do the same thing. He understands the front. And I understand the back end. We know both parts. So if I say one thing, he knows, okay, Jerry, let's go ahead and put this together. So that, that's kind of what we've been doing this week and understand each other. And I think that's, that's what's going to help us uh, get the call in to Dre and the rest of the other guys and we get ready to play fast. Bill Hubert. Hey, Jerry, I, I can't say that I've watched every single play, but it seems like you've matched Stokes. He third rate against number one guys like McLaurin and, and uh, the Bengals guy a couple weeks ago. Um, is that, did you match him a lot? How do you think he's done um, through that? Well, to me, I think, you know, again, we've done that. You know, uh, we did it a little bit last year when we had Jair going against some of the guys. And then right now, like you said, we have Matt Stokes on, on some of their best receivers. 
you know, right now we got a couple of our top corners still out. So we got a rookie doing some stuff that we would never hardly do with young guys. And I think he's, he's done a great job. You know, he get beat on some plays, then he come back and he make a great fourth down stop. So when you see young guys don't get rattled, I really, uh, you know, attribute that to a training camp when he was going against Adams and, uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers, and he didn't get rattled. I mean, when you're going against the best combo in the league, then you go out there and practice and then you know what you do it over and over, and then the game time it's a little bit, a little bit different. You know you're not as rattled. You know the game is a little different in the game, but I think he's done a great job. Jim Polzine. So usually seven games into a season, you have a pretty good idea of how good a defense is. It's a little weird with you guys because of the injury situation <laughs> um, and the schedule. Do you know what you have, and, and, and I guess you think you'll find that out in the next, you know, four or five games, considering. Well, hopefully, you know, uh, the guys continue to get better. You know, I, I think that's one thing that Joe stresses is that we got to play one week at a time. We can't look ahead and see what our schedule is. I know Matt does the same thing. We got to worry about Arizona and not worry about what we're going to do the, the week after that. You know, the big thing is we're just trying to win the football game. However we, we win it, we win it. I, I don't care. To me, I think stats are kind of overrated. If you win the football game, guess what? That's what you're going to get graded on. Steve McCarthy. Charlie, I'm coming in late, so I don't know if I didn't ask this, but I was just wondering, you know, your previous years as a coordinator, how much does that help this week in terms of making things go a little more smoothly? And I was also wondering how much Joe had been involved this week virtually, at least. Well, uh, you know, to answer the uh, last part of it, Joe, he's been in every meeting, which is great. You know, uh, he understands what we're trying to get done, and, and it's not like he's removing himself. You know, again, the, the best thing about 2020 is that we got Zoom. So it kind of helps us stay in the meeting, step to uh, help Joe stay coordinating what's going on. And then the first part of your question is, you know, it helps a lot because now I understand the situation of the game. I know how the, the situations go. I know what most teams are trying to do. And now it's up to you to get the call to the, to the, to the guy who's going to be making the call in the huddle. Biggest thing is that we can do to help Dre out is get the call in fast. So now those guys can turn around and see what's happening and then make the necessary checks to where they can actually go play fast. The worst thing we could do is get the call in late, and then all of a sudden you see panic, and then it hurts the rest of the defense. Mark Daniels. Hey, Jerry, got me on head? Yes, sir. Jerry, what kind of lift is Rasul giving you? Oh, man, you, you're talking about a guy who's been in here for three weeks, and next thing you know, he's starting <laughs> for 50 snaps last week. And, you know, when you see a pro, that's what I consider him as. He's a guy who he doesn't talk a lot. He's a real quiet guy. He understands. So it looks like he's like an older guy, but he's, you know, he doesn't have a lot of years in this league. So that helps me to understand his mindset. So when he comes in, he's all business now. He, he, he understands what he's supposed to do. We tried to make it as simple as possible for him. And he, he knew some of the names. And we said, hey, this is like this, this is like that. And he caught on real fast. So I think when you got guys like that that hadn't been a part of the locker room in training camp and all of a sudden show up and then the players embrace them, that means that they've done a good job in the locker room. And then they go on the football field and they make plays that makes them a lot better, especially in our locker room. Rob Rachel. Hey, Jerry, even though you guys have been without King and Alexander for you know a chunk of the season, you You've been outstanding in, in man coverage. I think you ranked first in the league in yards per attempt when you guys are in straight up man. Does that surprise you? And I guess how is this group doing it, even without a couple of guys, you know, that, that are key parts of your secondary? Well, to me, I think, you know, you, you got to look at the guys up front. You know, uh, Joe always stressed, and I know that's one thing that we stress on the back end. Rush and coverage go hand in hand. So if Joe's putting us in man to man situations, the rush guys up front say, hey, we got to get there to get those guys down to where they're not covering long. So it's not like we're trying to, we're covering a long time. Our guys know what the situation is. They're going out and they're covering their guy. But, you know, you got to look at those defensive line guys and the guys up front, the Dre, when they're, when they're going to get the quarterback, they know there's a sense of urgency that rush and coverage go hand in hand. And that's kind of what we're doing right now. Hey, Jerry, you've been around a lot of staff, so I just wanted to see what your thoughts were on the cohesiveness of this you know, particular defensive you know, kind of coaching staff. I know you already went through this once with Jerry you know, Montgomery earlier this season. Just, just how do you think that that sort of helps you know, kind of navigate a week like this? Well, to me, I think, you know, uh, having to go through with Jerry and then Joe kind of kind of showed us the roadmap. 
We actually put Wendell in. Wendell did a great job of stepping in and, you know, doing the things that he, uh, Jared Montgomery wanted him to do. And then right now, it's like the second time. So it's, it, we know it's the coordinator. But somebody's got to call the plays. And I was fortunate enough to be that guy. But the big thing is we got to let our guys know, hey, this is going to be a collective effort. It's not just going to be Jerry's show. This is going to be Jerry Montgomery. It's going to be Mike Smith. It's going to be RD. It's going to be KO. Head coach want to chime in. Hey, we want to win the football game. Bill Hewitt. You know, I had a follow-up on my Stokes question from earlier. I, I know you're trying to win this week and next week and so on, but um, – do you see the long-term payoff there that you know, once you get your guys back, you're going to have a really seasoned rookie cornerback out there? Well, uh, hopefully, you know, like you said, when we, we do get the other guys back, you know, Eric Stokes understands that, you know what, this is valuable time that I've actually put on the football field. So now, you know, if you want to play three corners, you want to play – Four corners, you got those guys available, you know, and so, so I think that that'll be big for Joe to come in and say, hey, Jerry, give me four corners and two stations. Let me see how it looks. These guys are really good. They've actually warranted snaps. So if we need to do that, then hopefully uh, we get a chance to. But like I said, you know, the big thing was, was just like not so look so far that we can't think about, you know, Arizona. Progression. Gary, just one last thing on, on Arizona. You know, that, that group of pass catchers they have with, with Hopkins and Green and, and, and Moore, the rookie, you know, Kirk, Ertz, they just added the tight end. Um, it, Jerry, is that as good as you've seen in, in a while? Um, that those, those five can really pull some problems, can't they? Yeah, well, you know, like, like you, you look at them and you look at Kansas City, you know, when Kansas City was rolling. You look at those guys and you say, man, what are you going to do coverage-wise? I think, you know, these guys are really, really good. You know, you got two guys that are excellent outside. Both of them deserve to be number ones, and they have been number ones on their team. Then you put a young rookie in who has the speed to do what he needs to do. And then you got another young kid from Purdue, and he runs faster than all of them. So the biggest thing we got to do is, again, we got to try to match up. And the, and the thing that's been working for us is rushing coverage. You know, we got to make sure that we do the right things that's going to keep uh, Murray in the pocket, hopefully throw the ball on time. If he scrambles, the D-line's got to get after him. And then guys on the back end, we got to cover a little bit longer than we, than we used to.